Today I want to share you uh, the word of God from Psalm chapter 1 uh, verse 3 but I'll read uh, from 1 to 3 and I want to concentrate on uh, verse 3 as it is written here blessed is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers but this delight but his delights is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night and third he is like a tree planted by a stream of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither whatever he does whispers amen actually here in this uh, scripture we see that god compares our christian life with a prosper tree prosper tree am i right yes. prosper tree another name of this prosper tree is written here a blessed tree a to be a blessed tree a tree has to be planted by streams of water and that yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither uh, jesus himself declares in john chapter 7 verse 38 Whoever believes in me, whoever believes in me. As the scripture has said, a stream of living water will flow from within him. Amen. Uh, there is a one story of one sadhu. Sadhu means he's a hermit from India. And he was a sadhu, his name was Sadhu Sundar Singh. Sadhu Sundar Singh was a Punjabi man. Punjabi man means uh, who would wear the turban, you know, on the head. And he was a great preacher in uh, 18th century in, uh, in India. And he was quite famous, uh, um, I mean, the preacher in the whole Asia as well. Uh, sadhu Sundar Singh, uh, he preached gospel in India, most of the parts of India, and at the same time in Nepal also, you know, in many, many places he had visited in Nepal, and also that time he had been in Tibet with the gospel, and uh, also in Japan and Thailand and other countries he had visited a lot, mainly in the Asian countries. And once he was in my hometown also, in the eastern part of Nepal, and uh, what his story says is, my people refused him. Uh, his good news, refused him and his good news and persecuted him very badly. And Mr. Sadhu, he writes there, one whole night he was hung on a tree making upside down there, whole night. Since then, never my people allowed you know, to come to gospel in my regions until my generation, until my generation. So Mr. Sadhu was so powerful preacher. Uh, God had performed lots of uh, powerful miracle uh, through him, even to save uh, his life from the opposition and from the wild beast like from the tiger, from the bears, and pythons as well. And it's a very powerful story is there about Mr. Sadhu Sundar Singh. His fame is spread it everywhere, and by knowing that one, uh, uh, his fame, one a very famous journalist, he visits to him to take an interview, and uh, that journalist, he asks Mr. Sadhu, Please tell me main points of your, main three points of your ministry success in your life. He asks the question. 
three main points of your ministry success in your life. As the response, with a big smile, Sadhu looks at the journalist and he answers, first, prayer, second, more prayer, and third, even more prayer. So, whenever we talk about the blessed tree, these are the three, you know, points are very important for our life, prayer, more prayer, and uh, more prayer, more prayer, and even more prayer. So in my young age, I have been very much inspired by this sadhu's life, and I started my ministry, you know, by following his feet, and I started preaching the gospel in a different, different places where the gospel has not been preached yet, and uh, established the churches. A lot of miracle the Lord has done in my life, and in my ministry, and in my family. And still, God is doing amazing work there. Just as uh, Pastor Greg, he shared about the situation of Nepal. We have no freedom. And churches are a kind of undergrounded churches. Some pastors are in the prison now because of their faith. And uh, there is uh, always danger for the Christian people and the churches. Uh, in such a situation, you know, our people, they are... Uh, actually standing in their faith with prayer and more prayer and even more prayer. And the Lord is doing amazing work there. So uh, spending prayer life means planting ourselves by the stream of living water, which else is fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. Uh, the three thing, ma major, major three things I want to um, say to you this evening here. Number one, number one, first my point is, a prospering tree takes the worst from others and gives best to everyone. The prospering tree takes the worst from others and gives best to everyone. Just as a prosper tree, you know, one tree, what it does, it swallows all the carbon dioxide. It swallows all the carbon dioxide, you know. And then what it gives means it gives, as a written, fresh and life-giving oxygen. Right. And that will be the life for us. So in the same way as one Christian, you know, one prosperous Christian or blessed Christian always, we will take all the, you know, the uh, persecutions and hardships and uh, whatever, you know, the opposition brings, we have power to swallow that, Amen. to swallow that, and then to breathe them out, oxygen. Amen. This carbon dioxide is very harmful thing for the human body. Carbon dioxide that impaired cognitive function and the range of other potential adverse effect on the lungs, kidney, and bones. Whatever carbon dioxide, which is death, we receive from other, and in return, we have to breathe out fresh oxygen which is life for other people and for our enemies. <clears throat> it means we have to defeat our enemy's death in us. Our enemy's death in us and always have to breathe fresh and life-giving oxygen to them. Amen. This is the will of God in our life. Last week I was preaching in Nepali church here in Phoenix, uh, from the first martyr, Stephen, till the end of his death, while people were stoning him, Stephen made this prayer for them. Lord, do not hold sin against them. When he had said this, he felt asleep. 
As the result of Stephen's prayer, Saul was the planner and conspirer of the death and destruction of the churches. Encounter to Jesus on the way to Damascus and how Saul has been changed and how he returned, how he turned the world, how he turned the world upside down, preaching the gospel and planting the churches. Amen. Amen. That is how powerful our words and our, our, our life and our prayer. For us, uh, taking carbon dioxide from other and breathing out fresh oxygen to them is possible in Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus Christ. Because this example, Jesus, already he set it up, up on, the, on, on the way to Golgotha, upon the cross, and in the grave. Amen. In this long ministry journey, I experienced, um, you know, very many, many incidents. Like my wife, she's here with me, and she also experienced with me and my family as well, such as um, facing um, various hatred by others, persecutions, rebuking, badly treatment, uh, threatening of death, blaspheme, even had to face physical attack. We had to face legal challenges. Our opposition, sometimes they dragged me and sometimes in my absence to my wife to the police station with the false accusation. They reported, and, and, and actually they reported the end case file to the government authorities against us. Uh, even some roped us financially. So as a minister, as a believer, and as a Christian, and being in such a country like Nepal, what we can do to overcome the situation and to win the souls uh, in the, you know, our community. So the Lord, actually he gave us only one way. We had to shallow all that carbon dioxide and then we, to breathe them, uh, fresh spiritual oxygen to them. Yes, we did it, such a, you know, 30 years. We have no enemy at all there. So many enemies, they were there. And we continue prayed for them, continue, we showed our love to them. And now many, those very aggressive oppositions, now they have got spiritual oxygen from us and they have been saved in Jesus Christ. And now they are working as Lord and Savior, as a pastor, as an elder, and as a minister, and as a church planter. And I, now I have been uh, their pastor, you know, it is amazing, and isn't it very nice? So always, if we take the carbon dioxide, whatever we receive, you know, from our friends, community, family, our people, and if we digest that within us, and then we show, uh, we give them a fresh oxygen to them, oxygen of love, oxygen of good news, oxygen of prayer. If we give them, then this kind of great transformation can come in the nation. Amen. So, uh, as a tree, when we, uh, you know, the study about the tree, uh, as we see that, the, a tree absorbs carbon dioxide and turns them into sugar needed for them to grow. Without carbon dioxide, tree never get food, it means. Only the carbon dioxide, if that is avail available, then trees that lives. That lives. And without carbon dioxide, there will be no food for tree. And no food means no growth at all. In the same way, without problem, persecutions, and hardship, there is no way of growth for you 
and for me. So this is the word of God. This is the word of God. So sometimes I used to give thanks to God. Lord, thank you so much for allowing all this problem come to me. And because of that, those became the source of my life to grow. And I'm here today. Just as we see, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, And we know that in all things, God works for good. Amen. In all things. Of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Therefore, first point is that, first thing is that, what we need to understand is we need to uh, uh, we need to be a prosper tree like a prosper tree and we have to take all the worst from other we have to shallow that and then we need to give fresh life giving oxygen to them there are no enemies in the world for Christian and believers. If any enemies, they seems like enemies, they are our friends. And they're actually working to grow our life up spiritually. And now second thing, second point is that a prospering tree bears much fruit and brings glory to God. Fruits that we bear is life for other. People die if we don't bear fruit. Tree, uh, a tree dies if it has no carbon dioxide, just as it says. Tree only can give a life giving fruit when it eats carbon dioxide, when it observes and eats carbon dioxide. In my ministry life, one day I met very, very dangerous man. Civil war was going on in Nepal. In the eastern part of Nepal, I met one uh, revolutionary, Maoist revolutionary army, and he was the commissioner of the eastern part of Nepal. And all the war was going on there under his command. And. Uh, uh, you know, that time when I met him, he was trying to kill himself. And uh, <clears throat> he was trying to kill he killed himself because he had killed so many innocent people in the name of war. And he saw in the village that so many, you know, orphan children, they were there. So many widows, they were there because of him. A lot of destruction had happened. And they had attacked in the, uh, on the army camp as well. And our house was attached to the army camp. And they also attacked there. And our house, my, um, you know, the father and mother, they were there. And our house was destroyed in that, um, in that battle. And uh, my mom also see uh, injured uh, by uh, bullet pellet. And we took her back in the Kathmandu and uh, we did all the medication. And uh, after that, our house was strategically in a very important place. And the army said, we need to extend our army camp, so you have to go out from here. And then they just, you know, the <clears throat> uh, just us from there. And we also lose our house, our property, and we had to go from there because of this man. And he was the commander there. And uh, I asked him, uh, and then his mother, she requested me to pray for him. And uh, I asked him, why are you trying to kill himself? And he said, well, I never get forgiveness because I killed so many people, innocent people, so many innocent women and old people. And at uh, that time, I shared him, the good news of Jesus, because he was my greatest enemy, you know, because of him, so many damages we had to bear. But I loved him and I shared him. 
the good news of Jesus. And I shared him about uh, God's uh, provision of salvation and his justification, sanctification, purification, all those. And I said, if you want to be, uh, uh, get the forgiveness from all your sin, there is only one way, that is Jesus. And uh, after that, you know, I prayed for him and uh, actually the spirit of God worked in his heart and he said, brother, I want to accept Jesus. And then I helped him to accept Jesus and he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And other more, <clears throat> or two, three weeks, you know, the, our, my, uh, that gospel trip were there in the different, different villages and he chased my feet, you know, each and every villages and he himself started giving his testimony to the people. Jesus only the Lord who can give forgiveness, who can give liberation, who can give um, salvation. So I, as, as a uh, commissioner of the Maoist revelation, I worked, but nothing I could achieve. But as soon as I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior from that day onward, I have been completely transformed. And now, now I have peace, and I have forgiveness, I have joy, and I have happy, happiness. I was thinking, and I was seeking the way of my death by using a lot of drugs, alcohol, and uh, this hashish. But now I stopped all things, and I accepted Jesus, and Jesus became my Lord, and I got hope. He said, in many, many places. And now that man, he's working as a pastor and as a church planter. See, how we show, how we show, uh, uh, you know, the fresh oxygen after receiving all the carbon dioxide, then we could see that there will be amazing work. And now the Maoist leader, he is working as a pastor and as a church planter there. John chapter 15 verse 8 says, this is, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be, your, to be my disciple. Showing yourself to be my disciple. And now, third point I want to share with you, a prospering tree is a refuse and shelter for others. Blessed tree that gives shade and shelter to all who needs it. For if we have to be a healthy tree, we must abide by a stream of water who is Jesus Christ himself. No water, no life. No Jesus, no eternity. One day I was in ministry in one very remote mountain region and uh, I had to walk very, very, you know, the <clears throat> uh, hard from tourists from one place to another, up and down, up and down. And I found that in one village there was a big problem of um, drinking water. There were no source of drinking water. To collect the drinking water, the people have to go down two hours down, you know, with the jar, carrying the jar. There was a river, and from the river, they had to take the water, and they had to go up another two hours. Means just to get the one jar of water, you know, <clears throat> full jar of water, it would take four hours. And in the whole villages, you know, different, different, their own portions of water they used to keep safe, but they wouldn't allow anybody to drink. I didn't know anything about that. And whole day I walked, and I requested people, their families there, to give me a drink. But all said, no, we have no water. And then in the evening, I started, you know, uh, getting sickness. Uh, immediately, I got very sick. I suffered with high fever, headache, stomach pain, urine infection, unbearing muscle pain for the whole body. And then I couldn't make my uh, you know, that mission forward from there because I became so sick. I returned back home 
as early as possible, and I went to the doctor. After checkup, a report came that I had been dehydrated, and the case of that sickness was not to have enough water in my body. Doctor gave me medicine and gave me strong advice that I need to drink enough water. Additionally, doctor told me that I have to drink more and more water and that water flushes, flushes out all the sickness from my body. From that day onward, I came to know that um, actually, you know, if there is a lack of water in our body, another person will come there to rule in our life. And that another person, it is written in the Bible, the name of that another person is, in John chapter 10, verse 10, it is written, the thief. Right. The thief. You see, that thief, actually this thief had not attacked me, then I would do more work and I would get more reward from God. It actually prevented me, you know, from uh, getting all those rewards from God. And that actually damaged my health as well. I lose my joy as well, happiness as well. I lose my peace as well, you know. So this is the thief that steals everything from us. Right. Everything. Right. Health, wealth, glory, blessings, dignity, you know, everything. That's right. And... Uh, We do see that, you know, if we are in lack of Jesus, definitely these thieves comes and that starts ruling in our life and that steals everything from us. Therefore, to be a prospering tree, we need to be, we need to be abide all the time in the presence of God. Just as the sadhu says, prayer, more prayer, even more prayer. These are the three principles we had to... <coughs> actually, you know, follow in our life. So those who follow in our, uh, those things in our life and those who work as a blessed tree or as a blessed person, for them God has given here one promise. Bless, uh, it is in Psalm chapter uh, 128, verse 1 to 4, and I want to conclude my sermon. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in the ways, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your son will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus is the man blessed who fear the Lord. May the Lord bless you from giant all the days of your life may you see the prosperity of jerusalem and may you live to see your children children's children peace be upon israel amen so uh, when last time i had preached here i preached a bit long because that time i had wear nepali watch and uh, yesterday, me and my wife, actually Greg took us in the market and we purchased uh, this Apple Watch. Time is very correct. And I want to conclude my sermon. Actually, he brought us to the market, but we purchased watch by ourselves, okay? <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, I would like to request you to pray, continue for Nepal. And for the churches of Nepal, mainly for the pastors and evangelists and church planters in Nepal, we really need your prayer for security um, from the government side, from the community side, and from every side. You know, we need it. Continue, we are in the kingdom of God as a prospering tree. And please, you continue pray for us that we may continue be there and we may have uh, you know, continue the progress there, what we are doing. Uh, 
and at the end, I would like to thank you for again for this opportunity and all your support and your help for Nepal and for our ministry. Thank you so much. May God bless you.